It's February 2020 and the halfway point in the academic year at the UK's universities. For final year students, it means there's now just a few weeks of lectures remaining before their final exams and graduation in the summer. The country's top employers are expecting to recruit their highest ever intake of new graduates this year. And we're following six finalists from the class of 2020 as they apply for their first jobs and prepare for life after university. In Bristol, history student Robert Porter applied for a graduate role at Vodafone and made it through to the final round assessment centre. They get really covered like train tickets, put them in a hotel for a night, which is a small thing, but if it starts at 8 o'clock, actually, it's really helpful um, because I can't, well, I could, but I don't want to get a 5 a.m. train from Bristol. Um, and yeah, the assessment centre, so I think it went from 8 until about 3.30. Um, they were like really friendly. I think it was the nicest kind of working experience that I've ever had. Um, they just, the, the other people seemed all very interesting. Uh, they all did sort of history or politics or similar things, so it was a nice chats. Um, we spoke to some of the graduates. Um, there's only two people in the kind of graduate role. So it's quite small, which again, I quite like. Um, I don't want to be with like 30 other people, like in a team. It'd be nice to have other graduates to like work with, but you know, I think it'll be me and one other person. Um, and then they explained a bit more about the role and that the role sounded really interesting. Um, and I got really positive feedback from my kind of assessments. And they all seemed very friendly. So yeah, it was, I really enjoyed it. And Robert didn't have to wait long for some really good news. They phoned me up to give me the offer. I think five minutes later, they sent me a contract. They then emailed me about other things, you know, providing information, and, and they made it very easy to kind of a to get in contact. And when I did get in contact, they came back to me within about like a couple of hours. Um, they'd be really like on it in terms of kind of HR, which makes a really nice impression. About a week after I got the offer, they emailed me, inviting me to one of these kind of Facebook groups. Um, so the only thing majorly, so you know, it's it's. Nominally, everybody who's got an offer, though presumably if you didn't have Facebook, you wouldn't be on it. Um, but so from that, you can kind of see, you know, who's in various uh, schemes. So I've been able to message the person who I'm going to be working with, which is quite nice. Um, so far, they haven't put much up about the business. They did a, a kind of video tour of the offices, uh, and the, but the most recent thing was a pancake competition. Um, but I'm not a very good cook, so I didn't, I didn't submit anything. It's a great opportunity for Robert, and means he can now concentrate on his studies and enjoy his final few weeks at university. We're back at Lancaster University to see how final year computer scientist Eleanor Manalay is doing with her job hunting. So to start with, I, uh, the first offer I got was uh, last year in December. Um, and that was from BBC, and that was for the graduate scheme uh, that I applied for, software engineer. But the BBC took a while to send Eleanor her employment contract. They took a very long time to send it. Um, I remember after, exactly after New Year's, on the 2nd of uh, January, um, they got back to me and said, oh, we didn't forget about you. Your contract is on the making and it will be with you in the next couple of weeks. So, yeah, that was quite, quite a long time after I, I was told that uh, I got in. And since then, I thought I wouldn't really want to search for something else. Uh, but then um, I think that I wanted to apply for other countries as well. Maybe also because of Brexit, no one knew what was going to happen in, the, in, in December at least. And throughout the Christmas break, I think I was just thinking what's best for me. And UK okay, now officially out of the EU, Eleanor wanted to make sure she had other options if she wasn't able to work in this country. The first thing I did was to apply for IBM and for usually fintech companies, um, outside the UK. So uh, my first interview outside for a job outside the UK was uh, with IBM. And um, it was really nice how they wanted to talk about your personal experience as well. And that was actually the first um, interview that you had with a recruiter. It was um, mostly about yourself, about your interests, just, to, just for them to know that you're passionate about the subject. IBM offered Eleanor a graduate job in Bucharest in Romania, her home country. Um, I, I never really thought of going back home um, right after graduating. 
I was hoping for maybe a couple of years uh, outside and then coming back home, um, as it was always kind of in the plan, but n not right now. Um, so yeah, it, it's a great job and it's nice that it's close to my uh, hometown as well. Uh, I'm not really sure of the location, so that's why I, I've been a bit just back and forth with uh, my applications and um, with my offers and what to sign and when to sign. And I also interviewing with IBM London. So um, I don't, it was not really in the plan to like relocate everywhere and like not really know exactly where you're going to end up. But uh, I think it's also um, an insecurity that I have with uh, Brexit and with everything that's happening in the UK. With two job offers in different countries, it's a confusing position to be in and Eleanor isn't sure what she should do. I'm thinking fintech is is so great now with Revolut happening, Monzo and all, all these banks that um, are just next generation banks and fintech is, is just, uh, it's just really nice and I think as a female as well, uh, Fintech is a very good uh, domain for this programming. I think London is um, this lo the location I would go for um, now. So IBM London, uh, I think it would be a really great location as well. But Eleanor hasn't heard back from IBM in London yet. So for now, her job hunting continues. It's been four months since we left University College London student Ben Glass weighing up the offer of a place on the Teach First programme. When we last spoke, I had a job offer and then I was interested in um, like a, applying to other jobs, maybe with, not really with a view to doing them, but just to see how far I got in the process because after Teach First, like, that was something I could see myself doing. So in, I remember back then it was like thinking about consulting. Um, and I think the reason I had that in mind was because I was really enjoying working at UCL's EdTech Accelerator. And like education is something I've been interested in for a while. But Ben has reached an important decision. So I'm definitely going to take the uh, Teach First job offer. Uh, I'm really excited to do it. I've had some teaching experience. I think having spoken to lots of people that I respect and like have had some interesting careers or whatever, they say like teach first is not going to close anything off. And at minimum, it's two years. I, one of the reasons I'm doing it is to really improve my like communication skills and like to be able to hold the attention of 30 like year nines or whatever is just such a great skill to have throughout the rest of your life or career. Um, that's why I'm doing it. Ben's been very impressed with the support Teach First has provided since he accepted the job offer. I've been really surprised with Teach First like handling. I think it's been really good, especially considering the number of people that they recruit. Um, so I've been invited to um, maths-related uh, events with, with other employers. So there was one recently um, at like the Bloomberg offices that I was invited to. I saw the CEO, Russell Hobby, was speaking there. So that's quite um, a good, like, cool thing for him to do with his time. With all the other pressures in the final year, Ben's relieved to have a graduate job lined up. But there's been two times where like, I've been just massively grateful. The first is uh, going on Christmas holidays and you go back to your family, especially grandparents or whatever, and they ask what you're up to. And you just, I just realized like what a relief it is to just have this like plan and have a job offer. And this, the conversation ends after that. And um, I, I remember like the used to the year before not having an idea and the, the whole like, atmosphere around Christmas is just so much different, um, so different. Um, and then the second thing is like when your friends are, are like lining up applications, 
if, on top of their master's applications if they're not sure and they have to write like 2,000 word essay here, um, do an interview over here. It just really, I just was like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> We've returned to York to see how social policy student Chantelle Jeffers-Bobo is doing with her graduate job hunting. Um, so since I've seen you, a lot of rejections. Um, got four in one day, in the space of an hour, which is quite brutal. Um, but obviously you don't control when you get them. Um, I like spend more time looking at my applications because I think at the beginning I was just sending out applications just to get them in the door because a lot of time people die you'll get them in the door um but then later on i trailed off a bit and was actually thinking about options because nothing was jumping out at me and my top choice wasn't available yet because you had to wait till the new year Chantelle has found the whole job hunting process very tough but is worried that she could have done more Looking back, I didn't give my 100% to grad schemes. Um, I think that's probably because in first year, I was applying for Insight Weeks, I was applying for all these experiences. Second year, I had all these internships. And then third year, you have all these grad schemes. And I think you just get to the point where you're just like, I'm done. I'm so tired of spending my first term of uni each year, sending out countless applications just to hear back no. But also, if you haven't had the time to look and research, it just drags you down. Chantelle has done well with her application for recruitment agency La Fosse Associates. So I had my telephone interview uh, while babysitting, so I had a baby on my lap who was trying to grab my phone at the same time. Then from there I got um, fast tracked into the video interview and then I'm waiting to hear from them to find out my assessment centre, but they're going through some handovers. So just currently waiting and fingers crossed. If that doesn't work out, Chantelle does have something else up her sleeve. So I have my plan B, which I didn't realise would be my plan B. So my old school, which is a boarding school, are hiring a graduate assistant and that randomly popped up. Don't know how I found it. And I know some other schools, like boarding schools, are, are, are hiring grad assistants. So that was, that essentially is my plan B and hopefully, if I don't get the false, my plan A. As someone with a disability, Chantelle has found the application and selection process for graduate jobs particularly challenging. Some of the companies that I've applied for, um, like top companies, they ask for proof of your disability and that can be really demoralising. But also, because it's such a big company, you know there are so many applicants, there's thousands of applicants and you've sent in something really personal to you that you wouldn't share with a random friend or a stranger on the street and you're essentially sharing it with a, a, a massive company, some stranger just to get extra time in an assessment that you don't even know will get you through to the next as online assessment stage. And Chantelle is clear about what she thinks employers should be doing to help. You need to take note. It's not enough just to say we celebrate World Mental Health Day. That's great, so do I. But it doesn't change the fact that every day I have a mental health illness, I have a disability, and if I end up working for an employer, I need to feel respected in that sense because sometimes other people that have depression or bipolar or any other mental illness find it really hard to come to work. Over in Liverpool, final year business student Felix Kabuti Jr. has had a busy few months looking for opportunities in the automotive industry. One of my friends who graduated last year has been working at Enterprise for the past year and she's doing great, really fulfilling her role and, and really um, developing and um, prospering in that role. So I reached out to her, gained a bit more exp um, information about the referral scheme and she actually referred me and that's where my application started. Felix's job application for Enterprise Rent-A-Car was successful and he went through to the final round. A lot of people um, find assessment centres quite daunting but I'm quite the opposite. I tend to relish in that opportunity. I, I think it's a great experience. I love getting to assessment centres. Um, it may be because of the placement experience I've had. I did a few assessment centres whilst looking for a placement and I remember just taking every assessment centre as it was, just trying my best to enjoy the day. Well something worked because there was good news for Felix. And I was actually on campus at the time when um, the recruiter rang me 
to say I had the position and it was, I just, there was just a big smile that just came across my face. Um, I think within that smile, there's a lot of relief. There's a lot of, yes, I've done it. And a lot of just being proud of what I'd achieved. It was a really good feeling. It's a great opportunity for Felix and he's confident it's the right first step for his career. Um, Enterprise have this promote for moving culture. So that provides me with a lot of confidence in that I can achieve what I want to achieve at this company. So for me, it's a case of climbing um, the organisational ladder as much as I can, um, making a meaningful contribution and seeing where that can take me. When he starts work with Enterprise in the autumn, he'll be based in Manchester. Manchester is home, so I'm glad to be moving back and um, move back home with mum and dad. It's been a great experience living away from home, but I feel like the, for the near future, I would like to go back home and spend a bit of time with my family. Um, I think one of the main things um, upon completing my placement year when I spent that year away was how much time I do and miss with my family and friends, and it's great to get that back with my graduate position. In Birmingham, we're back with electrical and energy engineering student Louise McKeever-Jones. Since we saw her in October, she's been making real progress with her search for a graduate job in engineering. So I went to an assessment centre for WSP and SSE. Um, the WSP assessment centre was laid out really well and they actually booked all your transport for you which I thought was very helpful because it meant that you knew you'd get there in time and you also didn't have to worry about being reimbursed whereas with SSE their assessment centre was only half a day which in itself was quite nice because it meant there was no kind of awkward lunch time where you had to try and look like you're being really friendly um, when you're obviously really nervous. A week after the assessment centre Louise was offered the role of graduate electrical engineer at WSP it's an exciting opportunity. For part of them being a multinational company, they tend to send their graduates out to companies um, in different countries if the opportunity arises. Uh, for example, one of the graduates they told us about had spent a month in Mozambique, and I guess it's just to try and get their graduates learning different projects and different kind of how different countries work and different skills. So hopefully we'll get to go abroad. <laughs> But the offer from WSP wasn't the only one that Louise received. So another company I got an offer for was AECOM. Um, I originally applied to do a transmission and distribution graduate scheme with them. However, that sadly got cancelled. Um, but it did mean that they took me straight to interview for an MEP role, which is very similar to one I did over my summer internship. Um, the interview was quite nice. It was with uh, the two kind of directors that I'd be working under, um, so kind of the team leads, which was really nice to get. I got a proper feel of what working for AECOM would be like, um, an office tour and everything. Louise's father is an electrical engineer himself and was very excited to hear about her two job offers. He specifically said that he wouldn't tell me which one to take. He knew which one he'd take if he was in my position, um, but wanted me to make the choice by myself without him swaying me, which was very unhelpful because I think I would have quite liked his advice because um, it's quite difficult choosing between jobs. So I ended up doing a very long spreadsheet of the kind of pros and cons and whatnot. Um, but yeah, eventually came to my conclusion of WSP. So Louise is all set to start her first professional job in engineering later in the year.